OWI has done something they haven't done before, and that is release a roadmap for upcoming patches and major content. There's not a lot of information, but just enough to let you know what's coming. With Alpha 16, the main thing is going to be helicopters, and a new map. First we'll look at helicopters and what we know already. We know the Black Hawk is coming as it was shown off a long time ago. We can take a good guess and say that the MI-8 will be the Russian equivalent to the Black Hawk. Static models can be found all over Talil already. The original image in the roadmap contained a Chinook but was replaced with a Black Hawk. It's all speculation, but we might see a Chinook within squad. Now to the devs for some extra yeah, info. Yeah, we can address that real quick. Uh, Fuzz and Dylan aren't going to have any news on choppers. Uh, they are still in testing. Uh, they're coming along nicely. We're pretty pleased with the way the flight model is going. Um, you know, we're going to have to roll them out to public testing for you guys pretty soon because they need to get done. Like, it, it's going to be, we're, we're going to need your feedback. We're going to want to know how they feel to you. We're going to want to know how they perform for you. Uh, you guys are going to be absolutely key to that. So expect to hear a little bit more about that soon. But we'll, we'll when the time comes, we'll have somebody that's a little bit more involved with chopper development. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of uh, cool stuff to talk about. So sooner rather than later, we'll be getting our hands on some choppers and flying around in no time. Or we'll be having a random blueberry spiraling out of control and blowing us up instead. Next thing to look at is maps, and to my knowledge there's two maps currently in development. First map we're going to look at is Mutaha, which has been in development for quite a while now. It appears to be another Middle Eastern themed map. Based on old images, it's going to have quite a lot of urban areas, as well as foliage and possibly quite a few trees as well. The next map is one we've all been waiting for, and that's Fallujah. It'll be a map that will be heavily infantry focused, while offering differing urban environments within the city itself. Based on Fluja being the most detailed map OWO want to create, and it being the flagship map of Squad, on top of them saying it will most likely come around for release, I think we'll be seeing Mutaha in V16 instead of Fallujah. Due to the size of how Mutaha looks, I think it'll suit helicopters a lot more as well and suit the theme of V16. Moving on, the next thing we're going to be looking at is Beta 1. Note that it does say Beta 1, and this points towards multiple beta phases. The main focuses of this will be the commander role and optimization. Since I can't speak about optimization, we'll be focusing primarily on the commander role. We'll cut to clips of the dev stream explaining things about the commander role. I'll give my input in when I feel necessary. Um, and that player is given um, special powers uh, to perform different actions that can affect the game in really major map changing uh types of ways so calling like a uav or uh um calling like an artillery strike mm -hmm. or things like that um as well as uh being given the ability to like mark things they want to be done and like communicating effectively with squad basically leaders. how the uav is going to work is uh commander calls this thing in it flies off map uh, to the location that you've called it, and then commander can access the camera through that UAV and scout around with it, zoom, and uh, hopefully be able to use it to place markers and stuff like that through the camera. So it'll be a uh, an excellent surveillance tool. Um, you're not going to be flying the the UAV like like a crazy um, drone kind of thing. It has a set flight path, but you will be able to have the perspective from the UAV's position. As much as I'd like to fly around manually with the UAV, I think it's a good design choice that there's preset flight paths, as it means players won't be able to uh, fly around every nook and cranny and identify key things that need to be found. It's not 100% guaranteed, but we're hoping we can uh, shoot them down. So if, it's going to be way up there, but if you happen to notice it and you have the right kind of weaponry, you will be able to knock out the, enemy, the commander's UAV, so it won't be this god power. It will have uh, counters if you are um uh, smart yeah. uh, will it have thermals that i don't know we'll definitely think about it if it, if it makes sense and and perhaps they'll have some kind of um different filters uh thermal i can't promise that but yeah definitely we want it to be if we're noticing it's not very useful it's definitely gonna have super high zoom levels so the uav will be um quite a powerful tool but it will be on a cool down it, it will be called in do its thing and then it will have to leave, so you won't have an infinite amount of fuel on the UAV. With a combination of limited flight paths, limited flight time due to gas, as well as being able to shoot UAVs out of the sky, I think that would alone would balance UAVs having thermals or infrared, um, mainly because you're not up in the sky for a long period of time, you can't manually fly the UAV to where the hell you want, and I think it would be worth testing. 
there is still a potential that infrared and thermals and things like that could still be quite overpowered. So hopefully OWI does decide to test and uh, maybe we could test it in a play test or something before a final decision is made. Um, and we, we're going to allow it flexibility. So you're still able to do that and be commander and lead a squad if you are capable of doing that. Or if you want to, so you can be a minimal commander, but enough to guide the team, you know, while having some of these support actions. Or if you want to strictly be a commander that, you know, you just observe the map and you're fully engaged on situational awareness, uh, kind of giving intel out to all the all the other squad leaders and really guiding the team. And obviously that will only work if the squad leaders trust you, right? Our current take on it is we're not going to, because that one that just requires extra work to make sure that that squad is, is it's going to be limited. And two, um, we don't know if we want to restrict that squad to be that because um, we want to give people the flexibility to, hey, if you want to be a full infantry squad and use a commander as as an like a, as like you are leading a platoon and you're part of the infantry squad and you're just giving some guidance and not fully uh, embracing like being a commander, like looking at your map the whole time, then you're able to do that without restricting it to four players. So. Uh, so we decided to not go that route. On the commander, um, he might not be able to use his support actions um, everywhere on the field. Um, where he will be able to use them and not use them uh, is not finalized yet, but there's um, potentially uh, using them at the FOB radio or possibly like some kind of command tent deployable. So that's kind of stuff that um, we're gonna put the uh, feature in, the restrictive feature, and uh, see how it plays. And we might pull the restrictive feature out, or we might change the way a restrictive feature works. Um, we want to try a couple different ways to make sure it's uh, it fits in with the rest of the, uh, the design of the game. I think it's good that the command is not going to be its own separate kit. It's going to be an addition to someone already having an SL kit. I think that that's a big thing, having the commander actually on the ground and in the game instead of just staring at a map. I'm sort of torn between should the commander squad be limited to maybe four or five people instead of a full nine man with the implementation of the commander having to go to the fob or a specific deployable to be able to use his commander perks if he has a full nine man squad that means there's potentially going to be a whole bunch of squad members having that lack of leadership with them on the front lines because you don't need a full nine man squad at a fob per se there's already issues in the game where you know a squad leader is in a vehicle the whole game and he's got a whole nine-man squad and there's seven six to seven other guys running around with no rally point they're basically headless chickens just wandering around the map with no form of leadership but i also think it's good that there's the option there to have a full nine-man squad as well because there could be a really good commander that is really hands-on and can have that situational awareness and teamwork ability about himself as well i like the idea of Commanders having to go to a FOB or a certain deployable to access the commander perks. It means that the commander's not going to be stuck in combat on one of the cap points and he's not doing his job as commander calling in support and all that stuff because he's too busy, pre preoccupied with doing other things that he shouldn't be focusing on. Um, one of the features that we haven't really talked about but we are adding is a, it's a punishment feature actually. It's a commander's worth five tickets instead of one to try and dissuade him from being like the frontline troop that just runs out there all the time. And that might not work out. We might have to change it, but uh, that's an example of something like that is going to be a feature. And it sounds easy, but that's something that Dylan has to make. <laughs> so a commander losing five tickets on death instead of one, I think it's a double edged sword in a way. It's good. It gives incentive for the commander to do what he actually should be doing and not focusing on going balls deep into places he shouldn't be, he should be letting other squads do that. But at the same time, a really poopy commander might have been voted in, and by the time he gets voted out of something, he's died 10 times, and that's 50 tickets, uh, which is which is quite a heavy impact on the team, especially on layers that don't have a high ticket count. Moving on from this, we're going on to version 1 full release, which states new factions. So OWI previously in the past have stated that they would like two to possibly three more factions within squad after the full release so it looks like they're keeping to that with uh, new factions on full release there's no idea of what they could be but looking at this picture we can see 
some type of insurgent or Middle Eastern based faction with maybe a PPSH, maybe a G3, who knows, maybe we might get the MEC faction or a similar type of faction. And it looks like the US type faction with an M4, possibly an M16. Maybe the US Marine Corps to suit Fallujah, who knows. I hope these new factions are not clones of other factions and have a lot more different uh, weapon varieties and equipment varieties, vehicle varieties, because that's something we need. We need a lot of variety when it comes to factions. And right now, a lot of Op4 factions have AKs, the AK base, which makes sense because a lot of militia groups and insurgent groups uh, use the AK platforms. So that's why I like the militia as well, because they have AKs, but they also have other variety of weapons, such as, you know, the M4s and the G3s, the FAL, a bunch of different things. So hopefully we see op factions with a variety in weapons and vehicles and equipment. That would be nice. Well, this pretty much brings it to the end of the video, guys. Hopefully you guys appreciated this and learned some new things. I learned some things watching the dev stream. Um, and that's pretty much it. Until the next video, I'll catch you guys later.